Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Now is the time to trim your lamps and get ready for the coming of the Lord. Stay tuned for the Midnight Cry broadcast. I'll tell you, we've got a God who can work with our want to. Anybody here have a problem with your want to? Yeah. I mean, let's be honest. We need the Lord. We've got, we've got strongholds in every one of us, and the problem is not the big bad devil out there. I'll tell you, that devil is scared that we'll get this. He's scared of the one who lives in us because the one who is in us is greater than he that is in the world. You remember how the devils uh, reacted when Jesus came around? You know, they knew who he was. Have you come to torment us before the time? They were scared to death of what he was going to do. That devil is scared to death of the Christ who lives in us. We need to get that. Don't you ever be afraid of the devil in that sense. The devil will have no power over any one of us if he did not have help on the inside. That's the issue. That's what God is seeking to bring about is the deliverance from these things so that the holes are not even there. I was thinking about how Jesus got, gained the victory over the devil. How did he do it ultimately? He died. He gave up his life rather than give it into the devil's, for the devil's purposes. I mean, doesn't that tell us the pathway for deliverance for us? He has given us a brand new life. The only way to gain access, practically speaking, to that life is to let go of the other. We don't do that very easily. We don't do that nearly as easily as we think we do. And I'll tell you, you know, like that lady discovered, oh, this is great, this is wonderful. Wait a minute, i got a problem here. You know, God is going to bring us face to face with every issue of our lives sooner or later. Now, that's not meant to cause you to be afraid. That shouldn't cause any of us to be afraid. Isn't that what he said? Don't be afraid. Don't be dismayed. Don't, be, don't come to a place where you say, oh, my God, there's no hope. There's no answer. I'll tell you what, the Christian life is not going to be a cakewalk. It's going to be a fight, but there is one in us and with us and for us who knows what it takes. He is able to see the depths of my need when I can't see it. And he is going to bring about circumstances that, brings, that forces me to face that, be honest about it, and surrender it and bring it to him. And how many, ever many times it takes around that mountain, he's going to be faithful. Of course, one of the major reasons we get discouraged is ideas that are planted in us from our earthly experience. I've said this so many times, but I see it so much in myself. I see it in others. How easily we project onto God and fall into the trap of performance-based ideas about him. How do you feel when you mess up and you know you did? What does that do to your confidence? Do we just bounce up and say, well, God, forgive me, help me. But I know you for me. I know you love me. It's, I don't know how he feels about me now. Emotionally, that's where we get very easily. And it takes a lot of walking with God to get over that. I'm still working on it. How about you? I'm still working on it. There is so much that the devil has engineered. He has planted seeds in our hearts and minds. Some of it has to do with who we are in the world. I mean, there are, there's plenty of people. I guarantee there's people here. And the, your experience in the world has taught you, and the devil has jumped on it, he has taught you that you are less than others. He might let you into his kingdom, but you're going to be on the back row. You're second class. You're not one of the favored ones. Look at so-and-so. God really loves them, but he tolerates me. 
I mean, you, you fill in all the blanks, but you, you see where I'm coming from. If you get in your head that you are no good, you are worthless, you are, and, and, the, and the world has taught you that, the people in your life have conveyed that to you, and the devil has planted that seed, man, that is something God has to work on to get out of our hearts, to stop projecting that onto him, and to realize his love is doesn't change. I'm just reading this morning. David and Bathsheba, my God, one of the great heroes of the, of, the, of the Word of God, a man after God's own heart, author of so many of the Psalms, the experiences that man went through, the battles he fought, how much he learned about God. Boy, did that knowledge come in handy when he got in that terrible place. Imagine a man like that who becomes so careless this is one of the ways we get in that place. He got so careless. He not only stayed home from the, from the battle, but he saw that woman, and he didn't think twice about sleeping with her. She was the wife of one of his special soldiers. And then he tried to cover his sin. When that didn't work, he had her husband killed by the sword of the enemy. And the amazing thing is, even then, he had no clue. Oh, God, we need the Lord, don't we? You think about the need to, get, need to be together and encourage one another? I tell you, you get out there and you just get the meandering and following your own natural inclinations, you're going to be in a world of hurt, and he, he was. But what an amazing revelation it had to be for him to be able to come to God and write and, and pray what he did in Psalm 51. He didn't base his prayer on, oh, God, look at, look at my track record. This was a mess up, but let me, let me buy on this one. He based it entirely on God's unchanging love and faithfulness. Folks, that is what God has for every single one of his. He, well, we said this so many times. Like I said, this is so repetitive, but we need it. God knew what he was getting into when he sent out to save you. He saw every need. He foresaw all the issues of your life, and he said, that's mine. I have the power to fix that. I have the power to deliver them from that if they will only let go and be willing to die when they face the issue and trust in my grace. I can bring them through that, and I will. I tell you, God is so faithful. You want another example of, of the Lord? How many times have we used this? Peter. Did the Lord know what was going to happen? <laughs> sure, he told him about it. He said, Peter, you're going to, you're, before the, cock, the rooster crows, you're going to deny three times that you know me. Get real, Lord. I'd never do that. And they all said the same thing. But what else did the Lord say? I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. Thank God. Oh, how that needs to get our attention when we come into those very places Jesus knew about this. He has already prayed for me. He's not sitting up there saying, I'm done with you. I've had it. You messed up one, one time too many. You're just going to have to stew in your juices. I'm done with you. No, I have prayed for you. I already knew this was going to happen. You needed to go through this. There's one thought that I had that I guess, I'm sure I've said this before. This is an area where we need to learn how to believe Romans 8.28. And in how many things? All things. We know that God works for the good of those who love him. To those who are the called according to his purpose. Do all things include Failure? So is failure, does failure lead to defeat? 
Is, is it meant to lead to defeat or is it meant to lead to a stepping stone towards something else? If we really see through God's eyes everything that happens to a believer is meant by God to be a stepping stone forward, not backward. How can such a thing be? How can it be like that? Because if, if our hearts are reaching out to him, we're going to say, Lord, help me to start with. Forgive me. And we have a foundation for that. If we confess our sins, he is what? Faithful and just to forgive us our sins. See, the guilt issue has been taken care of. But he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. But Lord, what is it that you want me to learn here? There's something about me that I, have, I haven't really got this yet, Lord. You've allowed this to happen. Help me to get the stepping stone. Help me to understand it so I can plant my foot and actually move forward because of this. You know, I think we could safely say that Paul was one of the most knowledgeable people, not just doctrinally but experientially in the New Testament. He went through years of obscurity with God teaching him and getting him ready, and then there came a day when he began to share his gifts with others, and he went through hell. You talk about somebody who's been through some deep battles, deep waters. God brought him through. And he was able to stand up before the people and encourage them and write some of the very things that we read here to encourage us. And late in his ministry, late in his ministry, he writes about something in 2 Corinthians 1 that he went through. How many times have we referred to this? That he, went, he got in a place that was so bad. You talk about not having emotions. He wasn't sitting there going like this. He was, he despaired of life. He really thought it was over. This was a man who just threw up his hands and said, God, I'm in your hands. But I don't really think I'm coming out of this one. This was real. This is real deep stuff here. This wasn't just a, a momentary thing. This was a, this was a valley of the shadow of death. But do you remember what, why, when he came out of that, did he look back and say, God, what did I do to deserve that? It's not a matter of deserving. It's a matter of God trying to set us free and cut the ties that hold us captive. There was something at this late date in his life that Paul did not understand about himself. He said, this happened so that we should not trust in ourselves but in God who raises the dead. Boy, is that significant. This is a God, even if I had died, he could have taken care of that. This is a God who can do anything. But God had to take me this way. I wasn't, I, I, as much as I know about him, as much as I've experienced, I was still running in my own strength in a lot of ways. I didn't get it. I didn't understand. He had to take me down into that experience. But I learned it. Not only did I learn it, God didn't beat me up about it. The response of him, his heart was not, what's the matter with you? He says, I know what was the matter with you. You didn't. But I'm going to, I'm here to comfort. I want to fill you with a comfort, an expression of my love. And I'm doing this not just so you can feel warm and fuzzy. I want you to take that comfort and help other people with it. I'll tell you, we've got a God who's going to take us down the narrow pathway to the celestial city. Every one of us is going to face battles. I was going to say everyone is going to face ourselves. That's the one we need to face. We need to learn how to face ourselves. Look at ourselves in the mirror and see ourselves as we are. We are not going to do it any other way than having to face battles. I'll tell you, if we get to the place where the devil himself could rage in our face and it wouldn't affect us, you know, there's only one reason, because there's nothing in here. That's the place Jesus came to. The devil's coming and he, has nothing, he finds nothing in me. There's no hold here. Why? Because I have declared every bit of this dead to him. And that's where he longs to bring us. If the devil has a hold in your life, there's a reason. It's because whether you realize it or not, you gave it to him. It's still living. It's still dead. It's still wanting its way, its will and its way. And God's going to bring us face to face with ourselves. 
and he's going to do it because he loves us, and he's not going to do it with a, with a heart of condemnation, but with love and faithfulness, he's going to bring us down every path that we need to walk so that we can learn to know him and learn to experience him in ways that will transform our lives. Whether it has to do with a besetting sin, no matter how deep-rooted it may be, whether it has to do with with wounds that we've experienced in our lives, whether it has to do with just general human nature and pride and whatever we're made up of, God's going to bring us through. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Somehow he's gotten me through this morning. Praise God. You think maybe the Lord's trying to tell me something? Yeah, I'll tell you he is. He is so merciful. Oh, God, I don't want to serve him because I have to or I'm afraid of him. I want to serve him because I love him. Because I believe in his power. I believe in his provision. It's perfect. He's already defeated all my enemies. He wants me. But, but if I'm going to experience that, I've got to do some fighting. But if I do some fighting, it's going to have to be with his armor and his strength. I can't just blunder along and, and be, be caught up in the world and careless in myself, thinking I'm, thinking I'm good. I've got to be alert, just like Christian was walking through that you think he was a little bit alert when walking through that dark path? Man, if I get one foot off the path, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fall into a ditch here. But God brought him through. And I'll tell you, when the Lord tells us don't be terrified or be discouraged, do you think he means it? Do you think he means you? See, that's kind of where it gets down where the rubber meets the road. Every one of us is going to have to come to a point where we realize God loves me. He has provided completely for me. Every circumstance he allows in my life is to help me and deliver me and get me ready for what he has planned in the future. To God be the glory. And don't, and I'm going to say this, and I'll probably say it again, because I know how the enemy works. There are no second class citizens in the kingdom of God. If you're the worst of the worst, the lowest of the low, the, we the weakest of the weak, whatever, anyway, whoever you think you are, you're down here, you're nobody. God loves you. You are not nobody. Care what the devil tells you, you are somebody in God's heart. And he's got a plan and a purpose for you just as much as he does for me or anybody else. There are no backseat second-class Christians in the, in the kingdom of God. You are loved you were provided for with the same sacrifice that, that has opened the door of heaven for every single one of us. To God be the glory. Praise God. So, have not I commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. That is not just to Joshua. That is to everybody here this morning that's looking to him. To God be the glory. Praise God. This has been the Midnight Cry broadcast. If you would like a DVD or CD of today's message in its entirety, please request it by program number. While it is not required, a donation of $10 for DVDs and $5 for CDs is suggested to help with expenses. Also, for those who request it, we will send you our quarterly publication, The Midnight Cry Messenger, free and postage paid. Send your requests to Midnight Cry Ministries, Post Office Box 685, Southern Pines, North Carolina, 28388. We invite you to join us again next week at the same time, and may God richly bless you until then.